Welcome back to UX Tigers, the home of fearless usability and all Jacob Bielsen's new work. Buckle up, because today is about Jacob's list of top 10 UI annoyances that are not just mildly irritating, they're actively sabotaging your business metrics. First up is one we see everywhere, digital ambush. You land on a page and it's an all out assault. Bam, giant newsletter box. Whoosh, cookie banner. Ping, bouncing chat widget. It's like walking into a store and getting tackled by three employees before you can even look around. Your user's first mission shouldn't be a game of whack-a-mole to get rid of pop-ups. The fix? Just chill out. Let people breathe. Offer the sign-up after they've read something and decided they like you. It's called earning it. No more pop-ups. From visual noise to pure audio chaos, let's talk about the internet's jump scare. You're in a quiet office, you click, and suddenly a video blares at full volume. Your heart leaps out of your chest, and everyone thinks you're watching car commercials instead of working. Autoplay is the fastest way to make users hate a brand, all for a vanity metric. The fix. This is the easiest in history. Just don't. Put a big, beautiful play button on your video. I promise, if we want to watch it, we know how to click. And before you say, but engagement metrics. Let me stop you right there. Sure, you might see more video plays, but you're optimizing for the wrong thing. It's like measuring the success of a party by how many people you physically drag through the door. And it's not just our ears under attack, it's our fingers too. I'm talking about tiny touch targets. Are we designing interfaces for humans or for ants? Sometimes I'm not so sure. When you have to zoom in like you're performing surgery just to tap a button, the design has failed. This goes for those anorexic scroll bars too, so thin you can hardly see them. The fix? Bigger is better for buttons. The one by one centimeter rule is your friend. Make things tappable. It's not that hard. Okay, so you've navigated the minefield of tiny buttons, but now you hit a wall. It's forced registration. This is the digital equivalent of a first date marriage proposal. Whoa there website. I just got here. I don't even know if I like you yet and you want my data and a lifelong commitment? Most people are just going to say, nope, and hit the back button. The fix? Let people date you first. Offer guest checkout. Let users see what you're about. If your service is good, they'll want to create an account later. Stop being so needy. This next one is a pet peeve of mine because it's a good pattern in the wrong place. I'm talking about the hamburger menu. On desktop. Look, it's a smart solution for tiny mobile screens. But on a huge desktop monitor, hiding your main navigation behind three little lines is like having a mansion, but making everyone enter through the cat flap. It just makes users work harder to find things. The fix? If you've got the space, use it. A visible top or side navigation bar is your best friend on desktop. Don't play hide and seek with your core features. And if finding the navigation wasn't hard enough, what about just logging in? Welcome to password purgatory. Your password must contain an uppercase letter, a number, and the blood of a unicorn. <sighs> this doesn't create security, it creates sticky notes. The fix? Support password managers and ditch arbitrary composition rules in favor of a security meter that shows password strength. But breaking a user's spirit with passwords is one thing. Breaking the browser itself? That's a declaration of war. The back button is sacred. It's the user's undo for the web. When you break it, you shatter their trust. The fix? Let the browser be a browser. Follow Jacob's law. People like things to work the way they work everywhere else. Don't be that weird site that breaks the rules. All right, next up is the one that makes you question your own humanity. It's CAPTCHA. To prove you're not a robot, identify all pixels containing a bicycle in this blurry photo. Sometimes I fail these and have a brief existential crisis. Am I a robot? These puzzles are often so hard that they block more real humans than bots. The fix? Use invisible assessments that look at behavior. They do the job without making your users feel like they're sitting for an exam. Speaking of making users solve puzzles, let's talk about mystery icons. You know, a beautiful, clean row of icons with no labels. So minimalist. But what do they do? Is this cloud icon save to cloud or unleash a storm that deletes my files? It's a guessing game. The fix? Words. A simple label under an icon removes all doubt. Clarity is always better than trying to look cool. And finally, the crown jewel of user hostility. 
You spend ages filling out a detailed form. You click Submit, and because you missed one field, it gives you an error and wipes the entire form clean. This isn't just bad UX, it's digital cruelty. It's like making someone rewrite an entire essay because they misspelled one word. The fix? Respect users and never erase their input. Return the form with all the data intact and just highlight what needs fixing. That's it. So there you have it. 10 easy ways to infuriate your users. These aren't just annoyances. They're conversion killers, brand damagers, and trust destroyers because annoyance stacks up over time. Every time we implement one of these anti-patterns, we're choosing short-term metrics over long-term success. But the good news is, they're all easy to fix. Here's my challenge to you. Pick one of these sins that your product is guilty of. We all have at least one. And fix it this sprint. Your users will thank you, and your metrics will improve. Please like my video and subscribe to Jacob Nielsen's newsletter at UX Tigers to get his newest updates every week.